you to stand up, turn to one another, greet each other. Welcome to worship at Viacito Church. standing up about three of you are smiling you realize we're having worship in god's house Amen. in one of the most beautiful places i've ever been Woo! don't you agree with that yeah. i brought i brought friends all the way from texas and before they got here i told them man this church will really sing loud okay <laughs> remember we want everybody up the hill to hear us that are not here singing okay so first i want you to get your hands like this we're gonna go like this and then you're gonna sing loud, real loud. Are you ready? One, two, three, well, I
good welcome to worship this morning at Viacito Church. It sounds a little different. It looks a little different because yesterday we had our last Viacito vibes. It was a fantastic turnout. Great crowd. Who was here yesterday? Look at that. Who had ice cream yesterday? <laughs> I didn't because y'all ate it all by the time we finished up, but... It was a great turnout, a great way for us to reach out into our community. That's been a great thing for us this summer. You know, we've had three of them, and we've had hundreds of people on our campus. Pastor Fred told us that the first vibes, I know for sure, he said he thought over 60% of the people that were here were not members of this church and had not been to this church. So it's a great way for us to reach out in the community. So thank you for coming to that. If you're visiting with us for the first time today, welcome. We're so glad that you're here. It's a beautiful, breezy day out under the tent today. I hope that you got one of the worship guides when you came in. It's filled with important information about what's happening in the life of your church. Pastor Fred will give you a chance to grab one of those later if you didn't get one when you came in. Today's a very special day. We'll be taking the Lord's Supper. If you did not get your elements when we came in, Pastor Fred will give you an opportunity to get some of those later in the service as well. The most important thing in your worship guide, though, is what? The next step card. It's the tear-off card on the far part of your worship guide. Every person under this tent has a next step. You know why? There's something that we can pray with you for. There's something that you can share with us that God is doing in your life that we can celebrate together. And maybe you just need to update your information, or maybe you want to give us your information for the first time. <clears throat> just fill that out. Drop it in the card when, or in the box whenever you leave out today. Are you glad that you're here? Amen. Amen. Well, I'll tell you what. Last Sunday was a very special day in the life of our church. We had worship here. It was a wonderful time. As soon as the service ended, we all went down to the marina, and Pastor Fred... <laughs> Baptized, we don't need that either. Pastor yeah. Fred baptized <laughs> 10 people in Viacito Reservoir. These are some of the pictures right here. I just want you to take a look. We're going to scroll through them pretty quick. You can see some of your friends being dunked in the nice chilly water by Pastor Fred there. It was an amazing time. Let me tell you, the Lord was really working. We had nine people scheduled to be baptized. When we got to the lake, Bob, sorry, Celeste's hair just blew right in my mouth. Uh, anyways, when we got to the lake, Bob, one of our elders, had an opportunity to pray with a gentleman to receive Christ. Right here on the front row, Andrew is back with us today. Received Christ last Sunday. And just like Pastor Fred had preached about, immediately he was at the water and said, why not now? Yeah. Went into the lake in his clothes and was baptized there. It was such a special day. You know what was exciting to me? There were a lot of people there in kayaks that pulled their kaya kayaks up on the outside and watched what we were doing. There were people backing their boats in and taking their boats out. All of those people saw the body of Christ coming together to do one of the ordinances that Jesus told us that we needed to do. Isn't that a very great thing? It's a wonderful opportunity for us to get out for our church, for our community to see us. So anyways, we just wanted to share those with you. If you have questions about baptism, you need to see Pastor Fred right away. I think it would be great if we baptized every single Sunday. And I know he'd be excited to do it. Maybe inside once it, you know, next few months. But uh, anyways, are you glad that you're here today? Well, the first folks that you saw singing up here with us, that is the CRM Singers. They make their home in Decatur, Texas, and they came up to sing with you. These two folks here with me are Copper Canyon Bluegrass Band. They live in Louisville, Texas, and they all came up for vibes. And uh, we want to share a song here with you called... I'd like to live in glory. I'd like to stay here longer than man's allotted days and watch the fleeting changes of life's uneven ways. But if my Savior calls me to that sweet home on high, I'll live with him forever in glory by and by. Oh, yes, I'll live in glory, live in glory by and by. I'll tell and sing love story, tell love story there on high. There with my dear Redeemer, there no, no more to die. Oh yes, I'll live in glory, glory, by and by. Sky, as in the endless ages, his glory by and by. 
Oh, yes, I'll live in glory, live in glory by and by. I'll tell and sing love story, tell love story there on high. There with my dear Redeemer, there no more, no more to die. Oh, yes, I'll live in glory, glory by and by. Oh, yes, I'll live in glory, live in glory by and by. I'll tell and sing love story, tell love story. They're on high, there with my dear Redeemer. There no more, no more to die. Oh, yes, I'll live in glory, glory by and by. All right, well, listen. You all know the word I like to use in worship all the time is participation. Okay, that was one you got to sit and watch. But now it's time, if you can, to stand up and worship with us this morning when we all get to heaven. For eternity, we will sing praises to the Savior. No more tears, no more sorrow, no more questions, no more lingering unanswered questions that we wander here on this earth. None of that will matter. We will spend eternity worshiping the risen Savior face to face. I don't know where you are this morning. I don't know what you're going through, what trials and tribulations you're walking through, or what's heavy on your heart. But the next song we sing, I, I love it. It says, are you thirsty? Are you empty? <laughs> there you go. He's thirsty. Uh, <laughs> are you thirsty? Are you empty? Then come and drink from the living water. Are you tired? Are you broken? There is peace unspoken if you rest beside these living waters. There's a river that flows with mercy and love, bringing joy to the city of our God. There our hope is secure. Do not fear anymore. Praise the Lord of living waters. Amen? Amen. Sing this song with us, church. Are you thirsty? Are you thirsty? Are you empty? Come and drink these living waters.
pray with me? Father God, we come to you this morning thanking you for the living water. Lord, you provide it for us. You offer it to us. But it's our decision to drink of the living water. It's our decision to choose to have a relationship with you because that's the kind of God you are. You don't force us into anything. Lord, you give us a choice. The greatest choice that we could ever make. And I know today, gathered in this place, that there are people in this room who have not made a decision to accept the love of God. The greatest decision that any one of us could ever make today is the day of salvation. Today, before we drink of your cup, Lord, may we all have our hearts right and a peace with you and a peace in all that we have. To know that while we may be struggling, while we may be confused, while we may be doubting, that you, God, are above all of those things. May we receive your love today. May we feel your love and your presence in this place in a mighty way. In the name of Jesus Christ, your children pray. Amen. You may be seated. I tried and tried to think of some good deeds. Thank you, Pastor Tom and Copper Canyon. Didn't they do a great job? Hey, I, I love Christian bluegrass music. Now listen, I'm not sure exactly what kind of music we're going to have in heaven, 
But I'm pretty doggone certain we're going to have some Christian bluegrass music in heaven, okay? I believe I, I heard God say that was his favorite kind. Amen. Well, if you brought your Bible today, you're going to need it. Did you bring your Bible? Hey, this is church, you know. It's the place you usually bring your Bible. You can bring it other places. But you ought to bring it to church, and uh, hope you did. If you did bring your Bible, open it to Colossians chapter 3, and we're going to look uh, beginning at verse 12, okay? I'm trying to position myself so the wind is not my enemy this morning. Hey, uh, do, do you have a, a bulletin today? Do you need one? Raise your hand if you need a bulletin or a pen. If you need one, raise your hand. These folks, the guy, the guy over here on the left side of the auditorium, he's a little blind, he's old, he can't hardly see, so raise your hand, wave, wave at him so he can see you. Now Donna's got great eyesight, she's a young lady, you just raise your hand, she'll see you for sure there. Bulletins or pens, we'll be glad to put one in your hand, you keep that pen, it's our gift to you. I'm going to have to stand like this, I think, will that work? I lost my little, uh, my little sponge that goes over this thing, and it's just real loud, isn't it? Uh, Greg, what if I switch from this uh, lapel mic to a handheld? It may be better on the, on the wind. It looks like it's even kicking up more. Yeah, that's better, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. A little bit. <laughs> okay, if that doesn't work, we'll think of uh, Plan C. Hey, well, good to, good to see everyone today, and I trust that uh, you're here today by design, not by accident. Now, it may be a design that you don't see and understand, but I want to tell you, God is working around you and here in this place and he's even working in your life when you don't think he is do you believe that yes. i'm confident of that and so you're here today by design god wants to speak to you today he wants to touch your heart he wants to change your life anybody here need need a change in their life are, are you perfect in every little way if you're not then you need a change in your life and and i want to tell you uh, God can move you toward His perfection that He gives us by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. And He can change your life, and His change is always for the better. Now, some of us have lived long enough to, to be able to honestly confess, my life is a mess. Can you say that? Now, don't lie in church. Now, come on. We have messed it up along the way. We need a good dose of God's power to change us in our life. And a lot of that is what I'm going to talk about today. Uh, I did not want to preach on this topic because uh, I don't know that anybody likes to understand that I'm falling short in this area of forgiveness. I would like to say to you, I got this one down, folks. I'm pretty much uh, your model. You follow my style. I would like to tell you that, but that's not the truth. The truth is, God told me I need to talk to you about forgiveness today. It's something that, a, a place in my life where I need to grow, and can I say this about you? I believe it's a place in your life you need to grow as well. Would you agree with me on that? Again, I know there's a few perfect people in here. You don't need any of this. You just came to hear the music today, and uh, that's okay. We're just glad you're here for whatever reason. But we're not where we need to be on this issue of forgiveness. And I'm going to tell you why as we get into the teaching today from Colossians uh, chapter 3, beginning at verse 12. So uh, before we jump into the message, though, inside your, your bulletin is an insert 
I received this this week, Franklin Graham, and I'm so proud of, of Franklin stepping into his daddy's shoes in a little different role, a great Christian humanitarian, helping us bring the gospel to people by meeting their immediate needs. Franklin Graham is doing that. He's not preaching revivals like his dad did. But he sent out this, uh, this week to a lot of people in his network, and I received this. And I wanted to ask you to join me today as we pray for the people who are being uh, uh, mutilated and abused and killed in the country of Afghanistan by this terrible regime called Taliban. Evil, ungodly people. Would you bow with me as we pray? Heavenly Father, we come before you right now knowing that you love all people, Lord. We cannot be so evil that you don't, don't love us. We cannot be so bad that you give up on us and quit loving us, Lord. We know that you are defined by your love everlasting. And Lord, we know that you love the folks in Afghanistan. So Father, our prayer today is that you will hold back by the power of your mighty hand the evil movement of the Taliban. Father, we pray that you will stop them in their tracks as only you, the all-powerful God, can do. Lord, we also pray for the people of Afghanistan, many of whom are Christians. Some, Father, do not yet know you, but they're being abused and slaughtered and taken advantage of. Lord, we pray for them. We ask for your protection around them. Lord, we pray that you will open the pathways to take them out of that nation, to protect them if they cannot get out. Lord, we know there are many uh, movements right now to help those people behind the scenes at risk of, of the rescue or at risk of their own life. Lord, we pray for your protection over them. And Lord, as we're praying as one small church here in the, in the mountains, Lord, we know that your people are praying all over the world today as your servant Franklin Graham has called us together for this united uh, plea for your protection for the people of Afghanistan. Lord, we pray that you will accomplish your purpose in Washington, D.C., Lord. Father, if anybody needs help, those folks do. And so we ask God that, that you will intervene and even use the ungodly for your purpose and glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Boy, don't they need the Lord in D.C. Well, let's talk about forgiveness. Can we do that? Can we do that? Let's talk about forgiveness. I believe everybody here, in fact, every person that's ever been born needs forgiveness, right? We need forgiveness because we have messed it up along life's way, haven't we? Would you say that about yourself? You need to be forgiven today. And would you also say this along with me? There are some people that I need to forgive. Is that also true of you? I believe those two statements. We all need forgiveness and we all need to forgive. That doesn't leave anyone out. That's who we are and where we are and, and the life that we are living today. That's why this message today is especially relevant. That's Flower, and she agrees with me. She says, preach it, Pastor, preach it. Now, here's what Paul wrote to the church at Colossae, Colossians chapter 3, beginning at verse 12. And I'm going to break this up a little bit, a little different than I normally do so that we can understand it. Um, Paul is wrapping it up with a uh, conclusive statement. Therefore, as God's chosen people... By the way, he's talking about you and me. As God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Now, in this verse 12, we see this beautiful description of the men and women of God. He describes us as holy. Holy men. Holy women. Are we living up to that? He describes us as people who are dearly loved by God. Do you recognize the depth of God's love for you this morning? Right where you are today, some of you have come here searching. I want to tell you, you're in the right place. Because I can tell you, 
without any hesitation, God loves you today right where you are. You haven't messed it up so bad that he has given up on you. Other people may have, but God has not. You are dearly loved today. Now, Paul said, we display as the people of God these virtues, compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. We're not quite there on all of those, are we? But that's, that's the way that we should look. That's the, the, the clothing we should wear. That's the lifestyle we are to display because that is who we are as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved. Now let's skip down to verse 14. We're going to skip 13 for a moment. Verse 14 says, and over all of these virtues, he's referring back to these that we just named, compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, love. Over all of these virtues, put on love. Because love binds them all together in perfect unity. So he, he adds to these virtues, love. And living in perfect unity. Now, in between verse 12 and 14 is verse what? 13. You're listening. I appreciate that. Verse 13. And he says in verse 13, bear with each other. In other words, tolerate one another. Put up with one another. Overlook our shortcomings. Because we're not all there when it comes to compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience. We're not all there when we are supposed to love one another as we should. We're not all there as we are supposed to live in perfect unity. He says to bear with one another, and here it is, and forgive one another. Can I tell you, no one here has the right or the permission to withhold forgiveness and be called a man or woman of God. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord has forgiven you. I feel the need to pause for a moment and pray. Father God, teach us this great, powerful virtue that we are commanded to do. Lord, we confess we do not forgive as we should. We confess that we need your forgiveness and forgiveness of others that we have hurt. Now be with the one who stands to proclaim your truth today. For his sins are many. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Folks, I want to tell you, there is power in forgiveness. Forgiveness is powerful, and it is the hinge pin. You guys know what a hinge pin is? It's that pin that connects the two parts of the hinge together. A hinge doesn't work without the pin that connects it together. Forgiveness is the hinge pin that makes us and keeps us and helps us to live out and proclaim and display, helps us to clothe ourselves with these virtues that say we are different people as the men and women of God, different from the world. It is forgiveness. And I didn't really see that and understand that until God took me to this scripture today. I saw this and I understood that that all of this Christian lifestyle that we are to live as the men and women of God hinges on forgiveness. Forgiveness. Without forgiveness, quite honestly, there is no compassion or kindness or humility or gentleness or patience in your life or my life. We can try to whip it up for a while, but we just can't live it out completely, fully every day of our life. Without forgiveness, there is no love for one another. We can fake it and, and try to help one another and do some good things. Certainly there are good non-Christian organizations out there to help people. But without forgiveness, we really don't love one another as Christ loves us, as we are commanded to do. And I want to tell you, without forgiveness, there is no unity. If there's anything this whole world lacks today, it is unity. You fail to see unity in, in government, in, in our world, in, in business, in every way. Listen, you fail to see perfect unity in God's church among God's people, 
Why are so many churches today fractured and hurting and, and they, are, they have a neutral impact in their community? They could close their doors and go out of business. The community would say, I didn't even know it. When did they close? Oh, about a year ago. Goodness gracious, I didn't even know that. Without forgiveness, there is no unity in our lives. I want to tell you, as I observe the lack of unity in our world, in our community, in our church from time to time, the Lord showed me this week it is because we fail to practice forgiveness as we should. So let's dig in. Here's your first blank. Write it down. You ready? Everybody get a bulletin? Write it down. Here's your first blank. As the people of God, we must forgive. Must. No option. We must. You can't hold a grudge. You can't be angry forever. You got to deal with it. You must forgive. As the people of God, we must forgive. They are not two separate things. You can't be a man or woman of God and not forgive one another. Okay? And the reasons... We must forgive. I'm going to reveal to you in just a moment. There are four of them I'm going to give you. And let me tell you first what is not on that list. We cannot... I'm trying to say this correctly. It's not coming out right. What is not on the list is we must forgive because that person deserves it. Because we don't. We don't deserve it. That's not our motive for offering forgiveness. That was not God's motive in forgiving us because I don't deserve the forgiveness of God and neither do you. So here's the four reasons we must forgive. You must forgive the people who have hurt you. And let me talk about hurt for just a minute. When I say hurt you, don't push back and say, well, Pastor, I, you know, I can't, really can't think of anybody that's hurt me. Don't push back on me like that because I'm using hurt in a large, very general way. People that have offended you, people who have abused you, people who have taken advantage of you, people who have been rude to you. I, I don't much like it when people are rude to me. You know what it does to me? gives me an opportunity to be rude back to them, and I seldom miss that opportunity. Okay? I'm talking about all of those things. So we must forgive those who have hurt us, offended us, cheated us, been rude to us, abused us, taken advantage of us. Why? Here's your first reason. Because God has forgiven you. Because God has forgiven you. Paul wrote, chapter 3, verse 13, Forgive as the Lord forgave you. It's the best place to begin this teaching of forgiveness. In fact, it's the only place to begin. It all begins right here with God, looking at God and seeing, understanding what God has done for you and for me. We have been forgiven by God. I have been forgiven by God. You have been forgiven by God. And you know what? If I wasn't a Christ follower, if I wasn't a pastor, I don't know that I would forgive you for what you have done. And I'm certain you would not forgive me for the things I have done. But God did. Do you recognize that? You have been forgiven by the almighty, perfect, and holy God. Folks, don't ever gloss over that fact. And that's why we begin this discussion, this teaching about forgiveness right there. We are instructed to forgive. Why? Because God has forgiven us. Isn't that a cool thing? Yeah. Now, sometimes I've been in counseling with folks who fail to recognize. They just can't get their mind and their emotions wrapped around this fact that God has forgiven you. Why would God do that? Why would God forgive me? And we talk about that. God loves you. He knows all about you. And he loves you enough to let Jesus Christ die in your place to pay for your sins on the cross. Here comes the wind. Tom, maybe we need to sing I'll Fly Away again. I believe I'm about to. 
God loves you just like you are, and He has forgiven you. So the first step is understanding that you must accept the forgiveness of God. Have you? Have you accepted? That's your next blank. Write it down. Have you accepted God's forgiveness? Some people struggle with just accepting that. I want to tell you it's there. Believe it by faith. God has forgiven you. He knows all about it, and he still chooses to love you and forgive you. Then the next sort of part of that that comes, I want to tell you many of us struggle forgiving ourselves. Forgiving ourselves. The evil one just keeps reminding us, sort of whispering in our ear about that particular failure. You wake up at 2 o'clock in the morning, you can't go back to sleep, and there it comes again. We're being chased by the demons, those thoughts, those activities, and we struggle forgiving ourselves. You'll never forgive yourself unless you first understand God has forgiven you, and I accept that. So the next time that happens to you, the the evil one's reminding you of your failures, and and you're struggling trying to, to live out in this peace that comes from God's forgiveness, just remember and cling to this fact that God has forgiven you. Underline this in your Bible. Go back to it. You'll need it in the middle of the night, probably before the week's out, okay? So we must accept the forgiveness of God, and we must forgive others because we have been forgiven. The Bible teaches that that the Lord Jesus came to this earth as a baby and grew to be a sinless man, and his purpose was to forgive everyone of everything. Nothing was left out of that equation. He paid for the wrongs that you have done so that you don't have to. Isn't that good? That's how much God loves you. That is true forgiveness. And what I want to ask you is, have you accepted that forgiveness in your life? Have you forgiven yourself? Here's the second reason we must forgive those who have hurt us. If we don't do it, resentment will control your life. Resentment That's a big three-syllable word. Here's another word. You'll just hold a grudge. You'll live in anger. You'll be just a crotchety old man or old woman in your life if you do not learn to forgive. Solomon wrote in Ecclesiastes, only a fool. Was he talking about you? Only a fool gets angry quickly and holds a grudge. You ever notice that some people seem to excel in holding a grudge? I'm not sure of anything else they do well, but they do that one real good. They hang on to resentment and hold that grudge, and that anger is right there. They just can't seem to let it go. Listen, can I tell you quite honestly, resentment, a grudge, failure to let go, will just make you miserable. It will make you miserable. And it will make those around you miserable. There you go. It will make you miserable. And when you're miserable, guess what? You make everyone else around you miserable. You wonder why folks don't like to hang out with you? Well, maybe this is part of the answer to that question. You ever think about that? When you hang on to unforgiveness, when you refuse to forgive the person that has hurt you, offended you, abused you, been rude to you, when you easily get angry and you hang on to that for a minute or two or a day or two or a week or two, hey, some people here today have been holding on to that grudge for over 20 years, maybe 30. Some of us have been here a long time, right? That's what I'm talking about. You hang on to it, and it makes you a miserable person. And you grow into your fourth quarter of your life, and you're just not happy anymore. What's wrong? Well, you've got to let go of this resentment. If you don't do it, you're stuck in the past of what happened to you 30, 40 years ago when you won't let go of it, and it controls you. And God's Word says, don't do it. That's crazy. Don't do it. It'll mess you up. So forgive. Yeah, they don't deserve it. I know. 
But if you don't do it, it's going to mess you up. It's messing you up right now. Don't let that continue to happen. Your past is gone, and you must let go of it. You say, Pastor Fred, I'm not sure I can. God says you can, and he will help you. You take it to him. God, I cannot forgive this person. This is beyond me. God says it's not beyond me. I will help you. He will help you every day deal with that forgiveness that you need to give to, so that you can move on with your life. Here's the third reason we must forgive. Because you are going to need more forgiveness in your future days and years of your life. We must forgive those who have hurt us. Why? Because we are going to need more forgiveness one day real soon. Right? You get that? Here's, here's what Jesus said about that in Matthew chapter 6, verse 14. Listen to how blunt Jesus is right here. If you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. And then he says the converse of that. He says, but if you don't forgive others of their sins, your Father will not forgive your sin. Does anybody here not get that? Uh, isn't that pretty doggone clear? But we don't seem to really to, uh, to live it out. If you fail to forgive other people who have hurt you, offended you, abused you, taken advantage of you, guess what? The Lord withholds His forgiveness of you. And suddenly you're in that, that stage of just being miserable and unhappy, and you become a grump, and, and uh, you know, everybody knows it, including you. Just ask some of your best friends. Ask your spouse. Is there unforgiveness in my life? Am I grumpy? What's going on? Help me because I just felt like maybe Pastor Fred was talking about me today. Well, you feel that way because I am. I'm talking about you. I got a call from your spouse this week. No, I didn't. that did not happen. But this applies to all of us, doesn't it? I mean, Jesus is so clear right here. It's not hard to understand, but it's very hard put it into practice, right? That's what I'm talking about. Easy to understand, hard to do. Here's what I want you to write down. Forgiveness is a two-way street. It's a two-way street. You must forgive those who have offended you and hurt you, and when you do, you'll receive God's forgiveness. If you say, no, I'm not going to forgive that person. They hurt me. I'll never forget that. And I'll always hold that grudge against them. Guess what? You're robbing yourself of living in the forgiveness of God. Hey, that's what Jesus said. Simple truth is you can't really receive the forgiveness of God when you're unwilling to give it to other people. As I was writing this message this week, I remember a conversation I had with a good friend of mine one time. And he told me this. And a lot of us guys have had this kind of conversation. If that fella had done that to my daughter, I would do the same thing that dad did. Sometimes we joke about it. But this was a real incident. He said if he had done that to my daughter, I would never forgive that guy. And you know what I said as his pastor and friend? I said, I know just how you feel. I wouldn't forgive him either. If that man, that guy had done that to my daughter. It wasn't long after that, the Lord reminded me of this verse. When I withhold forgiveness, I'm missing the forgiveness of God. And it becomes a grudge. It becomes resentment. And it radically changes my life in the life of all of those around me. We must forgive because we're going to need more forgiveness. Listen, you need, and I need, and everybody here under this tent needs more forgiveness in our life. Now here's the next point, the last one of this message, point number four, and it's why I chose this title, The Power of Forgiveness. So write it down. You must forgive those who have hurt you because 
it links you to Christ. Living a lifestyle willing to forgive without making them earn it, without making somebody beg for it, living a lifestyle where you are willing to do it first, to initiate forgiveness, means that you're looking just like Jesus. When you live this, when you practice this, when you do this as a man or woman of God, it links you directly to Christ. You're, you're looking just like Jesus. Here's what it says in verse 12. As God's chosen people, holy and clearly loved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, and patience. And then this is the linkage verse next on forgiveness. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. And 12 and 14 are connected by, with all of these virtues, verse number 12, uh, verse number 13, where we are instructed to forgive. And then 14 says, when we do this, then all of these attributes, these virtues, we're all bound together in perfect I want to ask you right now, do you realize the importance that God places on his people? Do you realize the importance he's placed on you and I practicing this act of offering forgiveness? He, he's telling his church here that we will lack all of these wonderful Christ-like virtues if we withhold forgiveness. He's telling the men and women of God that we will never be all that he created us and saved us and desires us to be if we withhold forgiveness. And then he describes this, this picture of, of unity. <clears throat> he says, you will never have perfect unity if you withhold forgiveness. So we must forgive because God's forgiven us. We must forgive or we'll just become an angry, dried up, resentful old man or old woman. We must forgive because we still sin and we're going to need more forgiveness. But listen, we must forgive because it is our linkage to Jesus Christ and the unity that he offers to the men and women of God. Three places that he gives us unity. I want you to write down. There's probably more. Unity in his church. So many churches lack the power of God, the presence of God. They're just an institution. They've been operating a long time, and God hasn't shown up for years. I've been in some of those churches, have you? A lack of unity says God is not in control. It says that the, the power of Christ is missing in my life. I fail to have unity in my church when I, as pastor, am withholding forgiveness. And you fail to do your part as a vital, essential part of this body when you withhold forgiveness. Unity in God's church. Unity in our relationships. We talked just a few weeks ago about relationships. Come on. There it is. Come on, one more click. There it is. Unity in relationships. We talked just a few weeks ago about relationships, and we, we talked about how we, we try to have relationships on this level, this, this horizontal plane with one another in the church and everywhere else, and we can never do it until we get this relationship right with God. This is exactly what, what Paul was talking about, unity in relationships are dependent upon forgiveness. It's, uh, he's also talking about unity within our family. Unity in our family. How many of here today lack perfect unity within all of our family? Our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren. Put me on that list. We don't have it. Not perfect unity. Oh, how I want it. How I want perfect unity in my relationship with my son. Forgiveness. Forgiveness. Without forgiveness, 
There is no unity. Paul said, together in perfect unity. A description of his church. A description of the men and women of God. And folks, I want to tell you, it only happens when we forgive. Can I ask you a question today? In our closing moments before we we celebrate communion, celebrate the forgiveness that we have in Christ, let me ask you this question. And when I do, something's going to come to your mind, and I want you to hang on to that. Here's the question. Who do you need to forgive? Somebody's coming to mind right now. If you're like me, maybe several coming to mind. Who in your life do you need to go to and offer forgiveness? I'll tell you, forgiveness will set you free. And when we begin to make this thing personal, you begin saying, well, Fred, you don't understand what they did. No, I don't. That's not really the issue. No, they don't deserve it. It's hurt you for years, still hurts. That's not the issue. The issue is you're stuck in the past. And you're missing a lot of great blessings if you fail to forgive. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Be still. Let the Lord move in your life, in your heart right now. Who is that person that you need to forgive? The Lord has given you their face, their name right now. I want to encourage you to reach out today with a phone call, maybe a, maybe a text, maybe that's safer. Reach out to them, write them a letter, and let them know that you are forgiving them for the way they hurt you way back when. If it doesn't bless them, I promise you it will bless you immensely. Let me also ask you, have you accepted God's forgiveness for all the things that you have done? Do you recognize that God forgives you? I mean, truly forgiven you. It's as far away as the east is from the west. He never thinks about it again. Maybe you do, because you don't realize that God has forgiven you. Maybe you need to forgive yourself today. Ask God to help you do that. He will, I promise. Go back to this fact that you are forgiven and the evil one will flee from you. And if you're still in bondage today from unforgiveness, I want to tell you that you can be set free. You just say a prayer. Lord, help me to forgive. Say that person to their, their name before the Lord. Help me to forgive that one that hurt me so badly. Lord, I've held on to it for too long. Lord, today I need to live in the freedom that you give of being forgiven and offering forgiveness to those that have hurt me. Lord, help me to do this beginning right now. Your word is powerful. It cuts, Father, right to the place where we live separating bone from marrow. Lord, many here today need to accept your forgiveness and extend forgiveness to others. May we do so in this moment. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Forgiveness keeps us in unity. When the Lord Jesus, years ago, changed the traditional Passover meal to what we call today the Lord's Supper, or communion, he was talking about his people living in unity. Did you realize that? He was talking about his church today. He was saying that when you celebrate communion together as the men and women of God, be sure that there is no unforgiveness that remains in your heart. So right now, we invite every Christian who's here, everyone that's asked Christ to come into their life, Ask him to be your Savior, your Lord. If you have done that, we invite you to, to get one of the uh, uh, kits here. If you need one, raise your hand right now. We'll have someone give you one. 
Several hands over here on the side, several over here. In this church, we practice what we call open communion. It's for all believers, all Christ followers, okay? You don't have to be a member here. If you're a Christ follower, then we invite you to participate in communion. And as Paul was writing on the church, the people of God celebrating communion, he was, as he was writing about this church in 2021, he said, if there is any unforgiveness in your heart, then don't do this until you go to that person and make it right. Give them forgiveness that they don't deserve. Let go. And then come back and be in perfect unity with the Lord and with one another. So in just a moment, we're going to peel the lids off. The first one is quite difficult. If you have stubby fingers like I do, it takes a while to peel back that little tiny cellophane. Go ahead and try to find it right now if you can. Everybody get it? Scripture says on the night he was to be betrayed, he took the loaf of bread and broke it, and he said, this represents my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then at the end of the Passover meal, sometimes called the Seder meal, he took the cup and he said, this cup represents my body, represents my blood, which is to be shed for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And as we drink the cup today and eat of the bread today, we remember what Christ has done for us in the past, the importance of us today because it helps us with this thing of forgiveness and staying in unity. And it reminds us of what? The day Christ will return. Every generation has said that, but I believe we got a good chance of seeing it. No doubt we are in the last days. Let me pray, and as we pray, the uh, praise team will come to the stage. And we'll sing a great closing song together. It's been a great day in God's house, hasn't it? Let me pray for you. And uh, your next step card, you'll have a chance to use it in just a moment. You can complete it and put it in the offering box uh, in the back. And, uh, hey, I almost forgot the announcement. Here's a couple of things you need to know. First of all, oh, a song announcements and then a song. Thank you, Pastor Tom. What are we going to do when Pastor Tom is gone, huh? I'll be a mess. So let me pray, and then, uh, then we'll listen to this wonderful band. Heavenly Father, speak to our hearts right now through the proclamation of your word and the truth of this song. May we take the next step of forgiveness that we need in our life. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, soul, are you weary and troubled? No light in the darkness you see. There's light for a look at the Savior and life more abundant and free. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim 
in the light of his glory and grace. Through death into life everlasting, they passed and we follow him there. Over us sin no more has dominion for more than conquerors we are turn your eyes upon jesus look full in his wonderful face and the things of earth will strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. His word shall not fail you, he promised. Believe him and all will be To a world that is dying, his perfect salvation to tell. Sing with us. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the thing of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. And the, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his Thanks, guys. Good job. Hey, it's been a good day in God's house. Let me tell you that uh, you guys are just so faithful in your financial support of this ministry. So I'm not coming to you to say, please give, please give. We got bills to pay. I'm coming to you to say thank you so much for your generous giving. We are spending it as faithfully as we can. And I appreciate it so much. You can give the traditional way, write a check and put it in the box in the back. You can uh, mail it into the church or you can give online. That uh, segment of our givers continues to grow as more and more people enjoy the convenience of giving online. But I want to thank you for your faithful giving. Uh, this Friday night is Family Fun Friday. We gather here at 6 o'clock uh, here on the campus for a, a wonderful time of uh, uh, games and eating. What are we doing this Friday, Tom? Do you know? We got a craft and food, and all that matters is it's free and fun. Amen. Amen. So be a part of Family Fun Friday this Friday night at 6. Now, let me go, go to something that I know all of you are thinking about. Next Sunday is Tom and Tiffany's last Sunday with us. Yeah, boo. I know. Me too. That's why I had to preach on forgiveness, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> we love this couple they're three kids and we're going to miss them desperately and uh, are working hard to figure out how to fill these multiple large holes that they're going to leave, leave with us to deal with in their absence but listen God has a plan his plan is always perfect and we believe that God's calling them to this church in Louisville Texas, back to his home church actually. I get that. I understand that. And we've been blessed with them being here the time we've had them. And uh, God's got a plan. As it un unfolds in the weeks ahead, I'll be sharing more with you about what we're going to do in his absence. But boy, I sure, uh, sure am going to miss him. But we're going to make plans to get them back up here occasionally, okay? We'll, we'll do that. Now listen, regarding their departure next Sunday, 
right after church, we are having a farewell gathering in our new fellowship hall, and this will just be a, a stand-up mixer kind of thing. You can come and hug their neck and get you some bye-bye sugar from them and that sort of thing, you know, and, uh, and, and pray with them, whatever you want to do. We'll have something to eat real quick, and uh, so we'll probably have a few chairs and tables uh, if you want to sit down when you get in there, but it will be, it'll move fairly quick. As soon as that is over, they are getting in their vehicles and heading south to Texas. That means that we have an opportunity to help them load the trucks on Saturday uh, afternoon before, okay? So this coming Saturday at 2, at 2 o'clock, and don't you dare have it all loaded by the time we get here. Saturday afternoon at 2, you guys show up, lend a hand, be a blessing, bring some encouragement to this couple as they are packing up the truck to, uh, to head south, okay? And then next Sunday will be their final Sunday and then a, a farewell gathering afterwards, okay? And listen, it'll be totally fine if you want to uh, just write them a check or put some cash in their hand to help them along the way. Uh, they will receive it and say thank you, I promise you that. But they've certainly been a blessing to us, haven't they? Tom, lead us in our closing song, will you? Thank you again for having some of my friends come up here. Have you enjoyed the folks that came from Texas to sing for you? We're going we're gonna to do one more song with you, for you, and then you'll be dismissed as we go. Let's do Glorious God.
you folks. Have a great week. Be safe as you go.